This is the last video to get you ready for the quiz over 5.3 to 5.5, which was going from inverses, exponential functions, and then finally the last section is the bases that are other than e. And that's what this video is going to focus on. We're going to do three derivatives and three integrals that all come from this section. So the first one says just to derive, so you want to look at it and first determine if there's any rule you need to use. For this one, you do need to use a product rule. So when we take the derivative, it is going to be the first times the derivative of the second. This is where the new stuff comes in from this section. This is the, something we call an a to the u problem where we derive that in 5.5. So the derivative of it is the original exponential function, so 8 to the 5x, times the derivative of the power, which is 5, times the natural log of the base, plus the second times the derivative of the first, so the second is the 8 to the 5x, and the derivative of the first is 8x. So I'm going to put this in parentheses so it doesn't all kind of jumble together. Uh, what you'll notice with these problems is they can get really lengthy, and you really want to keep track of what goes together and don't so you don't are accidentally start multiplying things together. For example, um, one thing that you could do is you make could make the 5 the power of 8. You would get a huge number, so probably that wouldn't be done. You could also multiply the 5 times the 4, so that's another option, is you could have a 20x squared, and then you would have the 8 to the 5x and a natural log of 8. I really wouldn't do anything with the second piece other than keep one piece in parentheses so you don't accidentally start multiplying 8's together. Um, they're, they're separate. The first 8 just has an exponent of 1 and the second exponent has a 8 has an exponent of 5x. So you can leave it here. You can even leave it at the line that I first wrote. Really the way I'm going to check it is to make sure you have all the parts that should be there, all the derivative pieces, you have the product rule done correctly, and then you're fine. When you're taking the derivative of a logarithmic function, the first thing you want to think about is, can I expand it to make it easier? And this is one that you definitely can expand a couple different ways. You can write it as 1 half the log base 6 of 2x minus 1, and then minus 3 log base 6 of x. You turn it into two simpler pieces. Now, the way you take the derivative, when you're taking the derivative of a log to a different base, other than natural log, it's du over u times the natural log of a. So that natural log of 6 piece will be in the denominator of each derivative. So the first one, when I take the derivative of 2x minus 1, I get 2, but I'm going to multiply by the half that's right here, so I'm actually just going to get 1 over 2x minus 1 times the natural log of 6 minus 3 over x natural log of 6. Can't do anything with this. Don't try to get a common denominator and combine them. I guess the biggest thing to keep in mind is when you do expand up above that first step that I did, make sure that your logs keep that same base. They should retain a base of 6 no matter how many times you expand it and write multiple logs. So that is a review of a to the u, and it's a review of log base a of u. Here is the derivative that we did on the very last day of the lesson, the right before the quiz, which is an example of logarithmic differentiation, kind of going back to what we had done on the previous quiz. And this is a specific case when you have a variable base and a variable power. Because currently, we know how to work if it's a variable base and a constant power. We can very easily take the derivative of x cubed, for example. And we also now know how to do it in reverse. We can take the derivative of a constant base, like 3, to a variable power, like 3 to the x. So we can do an x cubed, we can do a 3 to the x, but what we can't do with any of our current forms is variable base to variable power. When that happens, you have to use logarithms. What you want to do first to start the problem is you want to take the natural log of both sides. The, the reason this is helpful is it takes this power and allows it to bring it down. When you do that, you're going to be ready to take the derivative. On the left side, the derivative will always be the same. It is always going to be a 1 over y dy dx. This is where that implicit differentiation comes in with this. But it will be consistently that value after I derive it. On your right, what's going to happen every single time is you're always going to have a product rule. The reason is you just took a power that had a variable and you brought it down and multiplied it by your natural log. So you have a multiplication happening. So I am always going to need to do a product rule on this side. So I have first times the derivative of the second. The derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x. Plus the second times the derivative of the first. I'm just going to put the 3 in front. Um, I can cancel x's here, so I get 3 plus 3 natural log of x 
Finally, my goal is to figure out what the derivative equals, so I need to get rid of this 1 over y, so I'm going to multiply both sides by y. Keep in mind that y is just your original function, so y is just the x to the 3x. This is your answer, and you do not need to do any distributing or any extra simplifying or combining. You can leave it in that form. So again, this is only necessary when you have a variable base and a variable power, because it doesn't really mesh with either of the rules that we know. You will always take the natural log of both sides. You'll have an implicit differentiation on the left. You'll have a product rule on the right. When you are completely done deriving, you will have to multiply both sides by the original function to get dy dx by itself. Finally, the last thing that was in 5.5 was integrating. We were integrating of the form a to the u. So just kind of put a little formula up on top to help us. When you are integrating a to the u, you get a to the u but it is also divided by the natural log of a. So we're going to use that form a couple times here. Uh, two of the three will fall under that form. So the first one, we look at this problem. Our only choice for u is going to be the power, 3x. The derivative of 3x is 3, so we're going to have a one-third adjustment. This is falling under the type of an a to the u du. So my answer is a to the u, so that is a to the 3x over the natural log of 8, and then we have this one-third adjustment. So the easiest way to deal with that adjustment is just to put the 3 in the bottom, plus c. You could potentially see this written as 8 cubed, so you could take 8 cubed, figure out what that, does and ha what that is, and have that written as a natural log. You may set that in a multiple choice setting, but what I have right here is perfect for a short answer. It's a perfect place to stop. The second one. The second one has a uh, a to the u piece in it, but it's actually not that form. If you choose your u for this one, you want the u to be the entire denominator. The derivative of this is the derivative of 4 to the 3x is 4 to the 3x times 3 times the natural log of 4. The adjustment here is actually to divide by 3 natural log of 4, which is strange because we're used to not having logarithms in our adjustment. But it, remember, it is still just a constant. So when I write my adjustment piece in front of my parentheses, I'm going to write 1 over 3 natural log of 4. My form here, instead of an a to the u, this is actually a du over u. So it is a natural log. So my answer for this one is going to be 1 over 3 natural log of 4, that adjustment piece, times the natural log of 5 plus 4 to the 3x plus c. So kind of a different one because it didn't fall into the a to the u category, although we still had to understand how to work with it in it, and had a little bit of different adjustment than what we're used to. And then the, finally, the last one. The last one's more similar to the first one on this page, and the only difference is we have some trig in here, but my u is still the power, so u is cosine x. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. We have a negative, we do not have, or we ha do not have a negative, we only have the sine piece, so we're going to have a negative adjustment. This does fall into the category of a to the u, or 5 to the u du. So my answer is going to be 5 to the u, so 5 to the cosine x, divided by the natural log of 5, and then we did have this negative adjustment, so it is easiest just to put the negative out front, plus c and the integral is done. Uh, the only thing, again, I didn't cover in here is if you have boundaries, make sure you put the boundaries in and get your answer either in an exact exponential form or you can write your answer in a decimal format, going three decimal places. And that covers everything you need to know for the 5.3 to 5.5 quiz.